The winter of 1941 on the Eastern Front was unlike anything we had ever experienced. The cold was a living thing, a relentless predator that sapped our strength and gnawed at our resolve. Snow blanketed the landscape, transforming the Russian steppes into a vast, white wasteland. The once confident march of the Wehrmacht had slowed to a crawl, bogged down by the elements and the fierce resistance of the Soviet forces. We had been told that Moscow would fall easily, that the Soviet army was on the brink of collapse. The propaganda painted a picture of a swift and decisive victory, but the reality on the ground was starkly different. As we pushed deeper into Russian territory, the harshness of the campaign became painfully clear. The Russians fought with a ferocity born of desperation, defending their homeland with every ounce of strength they had. Our supply lines were stretched thin, and the bitter cold seemed to seep into our very bones. Each day was a grueling test of endurance. Our vehicles struggled to move through the thick snow, and our equipment malfunctioned in the freezing temperatures. We marched for miles with heavy packs on our backs, our breath visible in the frigid air. The cold was so intense that it felt like a physical force, pressing down on us and making every step a monumental effort. The once lush and green landscapes were now desolate and lifeless, covered in a blanket of snow that seemed to stretch on forever. The bitter cold. The cold was our constant companion, more brutal and unyielding than any enemy we had faced. It froze our fingers and toes, turned our breath into clouds of ice, and made every movement a struggle. Our uniforms, designed for the European climate, offered little protection against the biting wind and sub-zero temperatures. Frostbite was rampant, claiming the digits and limbs of many of my comrades. We huddled together in foxholes and makeshift shelters, seeking warmth in each other's presence. At night, the temperature plummeted even further, and sleep became a distant memory. The nights were long and dark, filled with the sounds of the wind howling through the trees and the distant rumble of artillery fire. We wrapped ourselves in whatever we could find blankets, tops, even the clothes of fallen soldiers, anything to stave off the merciless cold. Our feet were constantly numb, and every morning was a painful ordeal of trying to warm them up enough to walk. The cold was so intense that it caused our weapons to jam and our vehicles to break down. We were in a constant battle, not only against the enemy, but against the elements. The snow and ice made it even the simplest tasks incredibly difficult. Lighting a fire, digging a trench, or even eating a meal became monumental challenges. The weight of war. The battles were brutal, a relentless grind of attrition. Each day brought new skirmishes, new casualties, and new horrors. The snow turned red with the blood of the fallen, and the once pristine landscape became a graveyard of twisted metal and broken bodies. We fought for every inch of ground, knowing that each step forward was paid for with the lives of our comrades. One night, as we prepared for another assault, I found myself staring at the horizon, lost in thought. The moon cast a pale, eerie light over the snow-covered fields, and for a moment, the world seemed still. I thought of home, of the warmth of my family, and the life I had left behind. It felt like a different lifetime a distant dream that was slipping further and further away. The next morning, we launched our attack. The Russians were waiting, dug in and ready to repel our advance. The air was filled with the deafening roar of gunfire and the thunder of artillery. The ground shook beneath our feet, and the sky was darkened by smoke and the flashes of explosions. We charged forward, driven by a mixture of duty, fear, and the desperate hope that this battle might bring us closer to the end of the war. In the chaos of battle, I saw things that will haunt me for the rest of my days. Friends I had known since training were cut down beside me, their lifeless bodies quickly covered by the falling snow. The cries of the wounded pierced the air, mingling with the sound of gunfire and explosions. The ground was littered with the remnants of war spent shells, broken rifles, and the twisted wreckage of vehicles. The human cost. In the chaos of battle, I lost sight of my unit. The smoke and snow created a disorienting haze, and I found myself alone in a shell crater, the sounds of war raging all around me. 
My breath came in ragged gasps, and my hands trembled from the cold and adrenaline. I could hear the cries of the wounded and the dying, a haunting chorus that seemed to echo in my mind. As the battle raged on, I saw a young Russian soldier emerge from the smoke, his face a mask of determination and fear. We locked eyes for a moment, and in that instant I saw not an enemy, but a fellow human being caught in the same hellish nightmare. He raised his rifle, and I raised mine. The world seemed to slow, the noise fading into the background as we faced each other. In that moment, the war felt both incredibly vast and intensely personal. A shot rang out, and the Russian soldier fell to the ground. I stood there, frozen in shock and horror, as the reality of what had just happened sank in. The battle continued to rage around me, but for that brief moment, time seemed to stand still. The weight of the war, the loss, and the endless cycle of violence pressed down on me like a physical burden. I managed to find my unit later that day, but the encounter with the young Russian soldier stayed with me. It was a stark reminder of the human cost of the war, the lives cut short, and the families torn apart. We were all pawns in a larger game, fighting for causes that often seemed distant and abstract. The face of that young soldier haunted my dreams, a symbol of the shared suffering and loss that defined the war. The Turning Point The days dragged on, each one blending into the next. The cold, the hunger, and the constant danger became our new reality. We fought for survival, for each other, and for the hope that we might one day see the end of this nightmare. But as the weeks passed, it became clear that our push for Moscow was faltering. The Soviets were relentless, their numbers seemingly endless, and the winter was our unforgiving enemy. One evening, as we huddled around a small fire, trying to warm our frozen hands, our commander addressed us. His voice was weary, but resolute. We have given everything, he said. But the city eludes us, and the cost has been too great. We must regroup reconsider our strategy, we will survive this winter and fight another day. The decision to retreat was both a relief and a blow. We had come so far, endured so much, and yet the objective remained out of reach. The journey back was no easier than the advance. The cold was unrelenting, and the specter of defeat hung heavy over us. We were haunted by the faces of those we had lost, the comrades who would never return home. The retreat was a grim affair. We moved through the same snow-covered fields and bombed out villages we had fought so hard to capture. The landscape was littered with the remnants of battle-burned-out tanks, shattered artillery, and the frozen bodies of fallen soldiers. Each step was a painful reminder of the sacrifices made and the lives lost. The cold seemed even more brutal on the way back, as if nature itself was mocking our retreat.